Did a leaked blog post just confirm GBT 4.5? Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in around five minutes. Questions around OpenAI's next model have reached an absolute fever pitch recently. In general, people have been waiting for a very long time for OpenAI to release whatever is coming next, given that their GPT-4 has been the standard bearer for more than a year. However, what has really increased focus on when OpenAI's next model is going to come is, of course, the release of Claude 3, which is the first time that there is broad consensus that a model is actually better than GPT-4 in practice. Sure, Google's Gemini Ultra claimed to be better on certain benchmarks, but Claude 3 is really the one that I'm seeing people actually switch their behavior to. Take that plus Elon Musk's lawsuit and you have a fierce little cauldron of rumor and innuendo. One of those rumors exploded yesterday when people started reporting that they were finding a cached blog post showing up in search results on DuckDuckGo and on Bing. It was theoretically a blog post on OpenAI.com, where the preview reads, OpenAI announces GPT-4.5 Turbo, a new model that surpasses GPT-4 Turbo in speed, accuracy, and scalability. Learn how GPT-4.5 can generate natural language or code with a 256k context window and a knowledge cutoff of June 2024. You might notice that June 2024 is in the future from where we are now, leading to speculation that the plan was to be training it up until then and then releasing it. More than a lot of rumors... I saw numerous people tweeting that they had repeated this and they had also found it. Some used Copilot to try to get more information out of that cached piece. And keep in mind, this is from not necessarily normal hypey sources. Still, some people aren't buying it. Matt Popovich, the co-founder and CEO of Legislature AI, says, Really doubting the GPT 4.5 turbo cached Bing result means anything. One, there's hints 4.5 is being skipped over in favor of 5. Two, I doubt they'd release a turbo version of a brand new model substantially more powerful than GPT 4. Three, the cached page is over five months old. Now, on that 4.5 being passed over for five point, some of the folks best associated with OpenAI leaks, like the Flowers from the Future account, have been on this tip that we will not see a GPT 4.5, but will instead go straight to GPT 5. On March 9th, Flowers tweeted, No, GPT 5 is not coming next week, and GPT 4.5 is still canceled, as I said. That didn't stop Flowers, however, from saying that this will be an incredible week that will shock the entire industry, but it won't be GPT-4.5 or GPT-5. Given how much chatter there has been about Cognition's Devon, the AI coding platform, maybe that's what they're referring to. In any case, I think that the sourcing is about as accurate as this tweet from Accelerate Harder who writes, It was revealed to me in a dream that GPT-4.5 is coming. Basically where we are right now is that there is a very broad and strong sense that OpenAI has to do something that for the first time since we've all been paying attention, they are plausibly behind in getting more so every day. And I think that a lot of the energy around the discussion shows the general anticipation and assumption that something big is coming. Meanwhile, moving over into Google land for a minute, the company has announced some new policies around the 2024 elections. Specifically, it is now restricting Gemini from answering any questions about 2024 elections in countries that are holding those elections this year, including the U.S. and India. The company's India team writes, Out of an abundance of caution on such an important topic, we have begun to roll out restrictions on the types of election-related queries for which Gemini will return responses. This is an update from a policy announced in December that said it would be limiting election-related queries, obviously ratcheting things up even a little bit more. Although this started in India, TechCrunch confirmed with Google that it was going to roll out these restrictions globally. Now, some argue that this should give us pause about Gemini's capacity to give us good information in the first place. Cornell professor Daniel Susser writes, If Google's generative AI tools are too unreliable for conveying information about democratic elections, why should we trust them in other contexts, such as health or financial information? What does that say about Google's long-term plans to incorporate generative AI across its services, including search? From where I'm sitting, the more notable response is actually the lack of response. This is the type of thing that I think a month ago would have provoked a big outcry on Twitter slash X about Google censoring things, etc., etc. But in the wake of the dust-up around Gemini's image inaccuracy, it feels more and more like this is kind of assumed behavior and that people are, at least for now, writing Google off. That may just be a reflection of the moment. Or it may be that people just aren't that interested in election policies, but it does feel to me at least a little bit notable. Even while big companies are restricting their tools, this week has seen a raft of startup announcements. One of those companies is called Physical Intelligence, and here's how one of the founders, Lockie Groom, describes it. Lockie writes, There's been so much progress in AI, but it's been largely constrained to the digital world. At Physical Intelligence, we're developing foundation models to power any and all physically actuated devices with an early focus on dexterous manipulation. 
We're spending most of our time on scaled data collection, algorithmic development, and training large-scale models. We are extremely early in setting out to create a world where atoms are almost as easy to manipulate as bits. I'm excited to share a lot more soon. Well, one of the things that was shared was that the company is well-resourced to go after this mission. Physical Intelligence, or Pi, has raised $70 million in a pre-seed round. To do this, it is set to work creating its own AI model designed to bring basic human abilities to machines. But what fundamentally makes humans interesting is the brain, not our hardware. If you've been listening to this show, you know that the robotics AI overlap is heating up in a significant way, and it's pretty interesting to see how this company is approaching those problems a little bit differently. For now, however, that is going to do it for today's AI Breakdown Brief. Up next, the main AI Breakdown. 